Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I had launched a Gemini mission to the moon to lunar orbit and back using the shuttle. So it was a Gemini capsule with a trans stage and a centaur stage in the shuttle bay and the shuttle launched it to low earth orbit and then the centaur stage boosted it to the moon, trans stage captured it into lunar orbit and then brought it back to earth. Now we didn't make a landing in that and the landing is the harder part of course so now I've got the problem how do I land on the moon now I created the constraint that I had to use real hardware which is interesting it would also be a lot easier if I got to use Soviet hardware <laughs> they had more efficient engines so we are not using Soviet hard hardware we are just using American hardware and real hardware so I am limited on that and um, yeah, it's it's a little bit difficult. There is a sneaky option uh, if we want it. There are a couple of sneaky options, but one is the Gemini Lightweight Lander, which real is stretching it in that case. It was definitely proposed by McDonnell. Uh, it was never actually manufactured by McDonnell aircraft, uh, but it was definitely proposed, but I don't know how legit we can possibly consider it. So that's like the emergency version. I know that will work because uh, it's so light that we can definitely use that to land on the moon uh, and put it in the shuttle bay and that'll be no problem. Another option if we don't want to go that far uh, because that's she uh, just to give you an idea how she that is. Normally for a single crew capacity, we'd be looking like uh, maybe one ton or so. Um, this is uh, Mark 1 lander can has a crew capacity of 1, so 1.22 tons. Uh, this one is only 0.2 tons, so obviously that ratio makes it way easier. That means you can carry the rest of it as fuel, you get a lot more delta V like that. So that's no big deal. Uh, so we're I'm not going to do that I'm gonna see if I can do it without that because we all know we can do it with that uh, so I'm trying to use the lunar module here the ascent mo uh, module which of course has built-in fuel and instead of using the descent stage along with it we're using trans stage here and trans stage will start on descent and it'll just make the final part descent with uh, its own fuel and instead of using the ascent module engine, we're using the descent engine here. So we'll have one ignition to actually set down and another ignition to get back to orbit and then there's a spare ignition after that. We're using the LMDE-J version and that was for the later Apollo missions. So we've got that sort of set up there and um, then we have the trans stage and the Centaur T this time. And once again, as with the previous mission with the Gemini capsule, I'm going to keep it unfueled and then fuel it up with the external tank once we get to orbit. So we'll try it like that, but I don't know if it'll work because now this is uh, much more heavily loaded and we might be past what the shuttle can actually do. And so we'll have to see. And then, of course, after, even if we get to orbit, we have to worry about whether this is going to end up being enough fuel to do all the things. The, just to give you an idea, for the mission to get into orbit around the moon and back, we're talking about 3,100 to get to the moon, 800 to capture, 800 to get back. So it's 4,700 altogether. Now this, uh, just to uh, land and take off again from the moon is about 4,700. So you need 3,000 meters per second more on top of that. So that's very difficult. And uh, it... There's, there are other ways of doing it, uh, doing two launches with the shuttle, so we'd launch this top bit here first, and instead of having a somewhat under-fueled trans stage, we'd have it fully fueled, and that would give us more delta V, and then launch this separately, and then dock with it, and then do everything else, or we could use even two of these, if necessary, if we were bringing it up without that bit, so we could have this, and then we can have the Centaur G, which is the smaller version, uh, we used that on the previous launch. There's a smaller version of this uh, that's sort of half-sized. And so we could have them in sequence as the transfer stage. So there are possibilities, but we're going to try this setup first and see how close we get. Let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to do, we are going to do this uncrewed first. Uh, not the shuttle. The shuttle... Uh, 
they're, they're probably gonna die, <laughs> but we'll revert. But uh, yeah, we're we've got a control core on the lunar lander just for simplicity's sake. I don't know if that'll actually make it simpler, but anyway, uh, technically they uh, the crew would not go along with the lunar lander anyway. They would go with the Gemini capsule and then they would rendezvous with the lunar lander in lunar orbit, transfer via EVA to the lunar lander. Uh, it, it should really just be one, even though we've got room for two in the lunar lander. And then the lunar lander lands and then goes back up again, rendezvous with uh, the Gemini capsule again, and then the Gemini capsule brings it home. The Gemini capsule would probably do most of the, the rendezvous stuff and the approach because it's got a lot more spare Delta V to work with. Okay, verify that the shuttle launch script is going to the right inclination. It is. And run. So here we go. Once again, I'll try and top off the Centaur in the final phase of external tank flight so that we can uh, just continue with the launch script after that. Okay, getting ready for booster separation here. And off they go. Okay, and we're on a roll here. Okay, well, I better get the fuel into the Centaur now. Okay, Centaur is topped up. We'll see whether we actually make it with the external tank. I don't know. It's close, again. And now we're carrying a little bit more in trans stage. And actually, it's a bigger centaur, so that's another thing. Now, of course, in real life, they would have to just hang on to the external tank and top it off a little bit slower. <laughs> we topped it off rather quickly. That's not how it would work. Uh... Okay. Well... I guess I'll just ditch the external tank on this orbit. But what we could do is underfuel the OMS pods. Push away. Manual control. Okay, and those off. Those on. And power. Okay, well, I don't want the apoapsis to get too high, so we'll just uh, time warp to apoapsis to circularize. So I underfueled hydrazine on both the stages because I thought that we were carrying too much of it last time. You know, if we converted the trans stage into an AJ10190 stage, we could actually have it share fuel with the OMS pods and maybe top it off even more than we have right now using the OMS fuel. Instead of underfueling the OMS pods, though, to be honest, we're pretty tight as it is. Well, especially since the external tank left us on a low orbit. Okay, that's actually high enough on the periapsis, so that's a good orbit for a transfer to the moon. Okay, so our next struggle, getting it out of the bay properly, and I don't want to wait too long just in case there's some boil off. Uh, we did put some MLI layers on the tanks this time. Uh, what, since we're on the nighttime side, it's not boiling off, so that's good. But yeah, let's just get on with it because I haven't plotted where the maneuver is going to be, so I don't know exactly. Uh, but it's a really tight fit here. I don't know, maybe uh, considering where this is, should I get the Kuban antenna? 
Maybe like that. Just get it out of the way. I don't know. And let's try it. A couple. Electricity depleted. I was not expecting that. Um, it has electricity. Maybe it's talking about the shuttle? Uh, indeed. Uh, I thought I had the... Uh... Oh, right. The uh, fuel cell fuel is locked. Oh, and the liquid oxygen is gone. Let's just ignore about the whole shuttle. <laughs> Let's just... The shuttle is not our main issue right now. I can... I guess... Uh, hold on. We can pretend for a little bit? No, we can't. Because the APU we can't turn on without electric charge. Let's just ignore that for now. Um, we've got the hydrazine there. I actually wanted the shuttle to back away from... I don't know if I can do it right now. No, it can't. Well, this is awkward. Uh, will they separate if I time warp? We'll just wait until there's no more clippiness. Otherwise it'll all explode. Yep, I thought I had locked uh, the fuel cell fuel, but apparently not. Oh, this is really too close. Uh, oh, it's getting closer. Okay. Oh, you can use your RCS. Why didn't... Gosh darn it. Yeah, why didn't you let me use your RCS then? Oh, it it can only use its RCS with Smart ASS because Smart ASS doesn't obey electric charge things. Right. Anyway. Let's focus on what we're supposed to be doing, at least. Do uh, we have control over this? Um, okay, uh, I don't want to use any more of that than we need to. Okay, let's plot for the moon. Okay, provided a mid-course adjustment, this should be fine for now. I did put a solar panel on the pod. Hopefully you'll have enough, maybe? Just enough? Okay, good. Delta V isn't telling me anything useful. Well, we are going to find out the hard way. That says 3,422, which is more than we need. But the stock number is rarely correct. This is definitely wrong. Okay, making sure the fuel is settled. And ignition. Yep, oh, here we go. No shuttle in front of us, that's important. Okay, getting close to the end of the burn, looks like we have some extra. Well, we might as well just do a mid-course. Um, there's some Delta V. I guess we can use it for the mid-course, though that's not a lot of hydrazine to turn with. And uh, that'll do... That'll be fine. Okay, so we'll do that. I think, like, it's not gonna t take a lot of time with this stage to do 28 meters per second, though. So that's... a rub. Okay, well, I've turned very, very slowly to save on the hydrazine here. Get to the node, kill rotation, sell fuel down, and ignite. And shut down. And that's the end of the hydrazine as well. So we have to decouple. Couple that. Oh, God! <laughs> Hmm, that decoupler could do with some work. Uh, we don't need that skirt anymore, and we do need those RCS. I don't know if that actually separated. I, uh, I really need... yeah. Uh, of course, everything was... Um, 
parented to the tail bit, so it's all opposite, which is part of the reason why we don't have a good delta v reading. Going to be interesting, but we do have a good path. We just need to make sure we're stabilized. So, kill rotation, please. Oop, are the RCS working? Apparently not. Come on. Don't have a huge amount of hydrazine here either. So, uh, look, kill rotation means kill rotation. Stop rotating. <laughs> it's like turning to retrograde or something. Okay, that'll be good enough. Now keep an eye on that. Oh, our that uh, little RCS burn ended up bringing our orbit down. Okay, well the shuttle's gonna be in trouble, and we are not gonna talk about that. Yep. Okay, we are in lunar SOI, and we need a minor correction in order to not crash into the moon. And I would like to do that with minimal. RCS if possible. So what we have right now, I'm not sure of. <laughs> uh, I wonder if it's reading... No, there's no enable crossfeed there, so it should be reading two stages. Yep, it's not going to give me numbers because of the way it was attached to the shuttle. Okay, selling fuel down, ignition. Oh, that's too far. Oh, shoot. Maybe I have to use the RCS after all for it. Oh, that's a little bit off-center. Uh, I placed it after the fact, so... Yeah, we probably... I mean, it's a little bit hard to determine what exactly is the center on this, but definitely we should go with the docking port. Which it covers currently, but uh, there are alternative things. I just slapped it on for now. Well, that's a lot more hydrazine use than I want. Can we get this right? Well, with the application of many ignitions. Okay, oh well. That's fine for now. Now, of course, this would have to wait around the moon for a rendezvous with the Gemini capsule. So we can't go straight into a descent whether I wanted to or not. Okay, SASing, settling fuel down, ignition, and retrograde. I mean, that number could be right, but it also could be wrong, the one that the stock indicator for Delta V reads. It's not far off. Okay. Uh, 69 by 41 is pretty tight, so that's pretty good. Okay, so we'll try and land on the periapsis side. Well, I mean, over here somewhere, since it's daylight over here. And, yep, uh, I still don't know how much Delta V we have in this stage. Uh, maybe 1300, which doesn't seem like enough, to be honest. Let's get all this stuff on the same stage as the decoupler. This will be a nice place to land, actually. Hmm. Assuming the terrain was happy. Is it bright enough? Not really. We'll just go for over here, who knows. And then we'll have to be very attentive to our suicide burn, so maybe I should have that on that window. Okay, initial descent path. Okay, that'll do. And now we have a suicide burn countdown. Oh, I don't need the RCS popping all the time. Due to the fact that we're using the descent engine and this just the ascent stage, that stage actually has quite a lot of thrust to weight ratio so it's probably not going to be a problem okay well we're getting really close to the surface aren't we 
Uh, I don't know if I trust the suicide burn countdown particularly, to be honest, but... Well, I guess there is plenty of height above the terrain. I guess it's just a little bit deceptive and everything. Not exactly the flattest terrain we could have picked. Just in case we have to deal with that hill, I should probably give myself some extra time. I think it's basing it on this area here, but that's not a guarantee. We might have to land up there. I don't really want to land on the slope. Gosh. Okay, well. Uh, thrall down and separation, separation and ignition. Only one, uh, one spare throttle on this. Oh gosh, why are we not... Oh, 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 um, uh, still surface negative, thank you, please. Control from here. Okay, we still have a suicide burn, so we'll get on top of that. Alright. Gotta tuck the solar panel in for now. Okay, switching to SAS. Hmm. Oh, it seems wigglier than I would have liked it to be. And not the best balance thing. Oh no, I don't want to go up. I don't want to go up. Okay, fine. I'm going to have to restart it. The one restart that we have spare. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Just get me down. Just get me down. Uh, oh no, it happened. Can we get back up again? Get back up again. Okay, uh, well, okay, a, a pro, a pro like Neil Armstrong would have done that right, right? Oh gosh. Um. And what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm gonna cheat this up right. <laughs> so, uh, so we can test whether it can get back to orbit properly, okay? So we're going to go with uh, hack grab and we're going to Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Uh... Okay, stop. And then we have precisely one ignition left with the main engine there. Okay, unhack gravity. Uh, let me verify that that's all reset. Okay. Okay, alright. So we should be at regular gravity. And now, let's verify that this can get back to orbit. If so, I don't have to do any shenanigans like use the Gemini light lander or do two shuttle launches or anything. But it's uh, it's all pretty close, as you can see. Uh, again, the Gemini spacecraft would do the rendezvous, so we don't have to worry about that part. And it had plenty of spare fuel, I think. Heck, if it didn't have spare fuel, we could just uh, send it on more of this kind of setup Instead of what we did, uh, we could increase the amount of fuel in the trans stage or whatever. Anyway, so SAS is fine, RCS on, and ignition. And I'm just gonna use surface pitch nine. Uh, we're gonna go, actually, we should be going retrograde, but let's just go with 90 for now. 
Not the most efficient launch, but... Yeah, part of the problem was this just has too much thrust-weight ratio at the end, but... It's a choice between this and the ascent engine, and the ascent engine doesn't throttle, so... Tough choice. Here we have a disagreement between Mechjeb and this as far as how much delta V we have left, but I think Mechjeb is probably right. Also, we do have the imbounds because of the solar panel on one side, but it's relatively light. And then this whole mistake here. Those are my problems. We do have the ladder as well, so... Everything's all over the place. Okay, reaching orbit here. And shut down. Uh, so 48 by 40, that's a safe orbit, and we have 124 meters per second left to work with. So there you have it. Uh, it's doable. It's doable without too much cheatery. I didn't use balloon tanks here. We had the standard stages, you know, pre-existing stages. Well, I mean, the Centaur is sort of a balloon tank, but anyway. Uh, but there, there's... yeah. I'm actually very happy right now because this was a tight one. This was a tight one. And again, uh, the landing flaw aside, everything worked pretty well. So we're very lucky. Um, yeah. I was thinking in the VAB we probably wouldn't be able to make it and I'll have to do some modifications and we'll do uh, all of it again. I was expecting that this would be try one and even in this video I'd have a second try but uh, yeah well here we are. <laughs> so we could two shuttle launches we could put together this mission and they could do it. So there. Anyway with that being the case Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.